안녕하세요, 박종현 원장입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Park Jong Hyun. This is the second anterior implant lecture. This is about aesthetic impression taking in the anterior region. I usually take implant level impression taking in the anterior region with the transfer impression coping. This is the product called the transfer impression coping. Abutment selection adjustment and the vinyl crowns are fabricated all together on a model. For a single tooth restoration, as I said in lecture one, extra oral cementation is used. In using the screw hole, it is connected in the mouth. The prosthesis is much bigger than the healing abutment. The healing abutment is changed bit by bit, similar to the shape of the prosthesis. What is important is that it is um, very painful for the patient if it is connected like this. To connect in the anterior region, I use anesthesia. The final prosthesis is completed. One abutment is tried in. Actually, everything is connected extraorally to complete the prosthesis. After four years, both soft and hard tissues are stable. The interdental papilla over time has recovered quite a lot. Another case, at number 22, an implant was placed. Just like the previous case, implant level impression was taken and I work with the plaster model. I try to make the screw hole in the palatal side as much as possible and it's connected in the mouth after extraoral cementation. What is important is that you can see whitish part in the gum because the implant Prosthesis is bigger the healing abutment, so we need to use anesthesia. Number 22 is hopeless, so that was extracted and an implant was placed. A custom abutment was used, but for aesthetic reason, a buccoside, it is made of subgingiva. It is formed subgingiva, usually one millimeter or up to 2 mm subgingiva is used. So this is how the abutment was fabricated. If you look at here, the palatal side, I try to fabricate it above the gingiva. For a subgingiva margin case, abutment level impression is hard to take. In such cases, I use implant level impressions with the transfer impression copings. Another case, and this should be extracted, and an implant was placed like this. Here, a transfer impression coping is used, and this is a screw type prosthesis. As I said in the previous lecture, I no longer use casted abutment anymore but I used it before, so this is the casted abutment. Using the abutment on the plaster model, screw type prosthesis was fabricated. Everything will be finished once the prosthesis fabricated in a lab is connected. If I explain why I do not use the abutment anymore, the connection part, oxide film may develop, which needs to be removed. In the process, the connection part can be damaged by a lab, of course, depending on their capability. But this can be used for upper anterior region. We restore two teeth. We use a similar protocol. Two implants were placed in a position to have screw holes on the palatal side. The disadvantage of this is that on the labial side, the space is sufficient, but on the apex side, the residual bone is not sufficient. That can happen often, so rather than the residual bone on the apex side, the crystal bone, residual bone is much more important, so this is not a big issue. I try to place implants as palatally as possible, not in the direction of the root. 
I don't try to stretch the limit in terms of the implant diameters and length. I take the implant level impression just once, not many times, and abutment and the prosthesis are fabricated all at once like this with screw holes on the palatal side as much as possible. As I said before, this is different from the single tooth restoration which uses extra oral cementation and screw holes. In this multiple restoration, the misfit can happen in this area, making it hard to get passive fit. The key to internal implant is the connection. For proper connection, abutment should be connected first, followed by the cementation of prosthesis to get the passive fit. If this is extraorally cemented and connected with the screw, passive fit is hard to form in the connection area. For multiple restorations and to succeed with the stable prosthesis, we need to use the supra margin on the palatal side as much as possible. The subgingival margin should be 0.5 to 1 millimeter, not too deep, before cementation. As you saw before, the screws are removed using the screw holes to remove the cement. Even though we are very careful during cementation, subgingival margin cement removal is very difficult if you can adjust the volume properly. It can be done, but after cementation, we find the residual cement from time to time. Therefore, also in multiple cases, palatal screw hole positioning is very important. For a subgingival margin case, extraoral cement removal makes a difference in the outcome. Let's look at another case, which is from Austin Master Course textbook. After healing abutment is removed, the soft tissue like this, molded by the healing abutment, which is very different from the final prosthesis. So this is very different from the final prosthesis crown. In that case, we use a provisional crown, which molds the soft tissue. And the properly adjusted provisional tooth is copied. A transfer impression coping is made and impression is taken. I know it's best to take impressions after forming the soft tissue similar to the part of the final prosthesis that goes into the soft tissue. So this is how the soft tissue is stabilized and the final prosthesis is completed. We we can get the most stable soft tissue form. However, I hardly use the method and I will explain it later. Abutment level impression taking. The impression taking is hard to use in the anterior region. Primola and canine, which were mobile, were extracted and two implants were placed. The lip line fortunately is covering the margin area. If that is the case, we don't have to use subgingival margin there. We need to take caution for visible part aesthetics. For an invisible part, health should be given higher priority than aesthetics. You can see it is a supra gingival margin because of the smile line that is covering the area. After using provisional teeth, abutment level impression was taken. Final prosthesis was completed. Abutment level impression can give a very good uh, margin fit because of uh, supra gingival margin. Now, subgingival margin, abutment level impression taking. Transfer impression coping is used at the beginning. Before connecting the prefabricated custom abutment in the mouth, scan the first using a model scanner. After the secondary surgery, soon the prefabricated abutment is connected and the temporary restoration was mounted. Also, for the provisional restoration to take abutment level impression, before trying of the prosthesis, the margin fit should be good enough. With the temporary in the space, impression taking and the stabilization of prosthesis can be facilitated. 
even with the abutment level impression taking regrettably the margin is not visible the subject margin could not be obtained with the impression taking with the trimming the margin is not made clear before connecting it in the mouth the abutment the abutment image can be merged it is attached merged this way the subjunctival margin is easily obtained very good fitting subjunctival margin is observed i use pfm or pfz prosthesis using ceramics much more than full zirconia so i hardly use a digital scanning if lab technician can produce aesthetic prosthesis with a full zirconia, I believe this two approach can be a very good option. But for me, who use ceramic quite a lot, you can see ceramic here. Actually, the analog impression taking using a plasma model is a much more familiar option. Five years later, adjacent teeth discolored. At the beginning, the shade did not match, but with the discoloration of the adjacent teeth, the color of prosthesis became much more harmonious. Maybe the lab technician considered the discoloration of the adjacent teeth in the future, so he made it darker at the beginning. So the prosthetic shade the harmonious with adjacent teeth can become different after some time. In this case, I was fortunate to, to have harmonious result later. So the color modification would be very hard if we do not have the screw hole on the palatal side. So cementation type is the last option, but we need to be very careful in using it. Immediate placement and gap healing was performed. Inevitably, this tooth with post was extracted and an implant was palatally placed and the gap was healed. A lab sent us this. This is the final prosthesis they sent us. Let me talk about the meaning of provisional tooth that is used to mold soft tissue and individualized impression coping is used for impression taking. That is the ideal approach. Actually, for single tooth restoration, I don't do soft tissue molding with the provisional tooth. Because the soft tissue molded by a provisional tooth will be remolded by the final prosthesis, so it is not very meaningful. So, if ideal final prosthesis can be fabricated by a lab in the first place, actually, provisional tooth is not really necessary to achieve good outcome in many cases. However, if you do not have the provisional process, and send the impression taken with impression coping to a lab uh, the lab technician's opinion would be very much re reflected in the final prosthesis and i'm not sure about what problems it would bring but this kind of very unexpected design came i don't know what it really means so i believe the provisional process is uh, where a dentist can evaluate the form first before it is sent to a lab so we need to use a provisional so not to overly reliant on a lab we need to take the provisional process I refabricated the prosthesis with a screw tape and it is connected and completed. Four years later, it remains stable. Today, I talked about impression taking in the anterior region. Protocol. First, uh, implant level impression should be taken and the ideal form should be communicated to a lab. The final abutment and prosthesis need to be fabricated if we have a provisional tooth. Its information including photo need to be sent to a lab as much as possible. For a single restoration with a palatal screw hole, extra oral cementation is used. And for multiple restorations with a splinting, it is never cemented extra orally. Abutments are first connected and cemented and the prosthesis is removed using the screw hole and cement is removed to achieve 
passive fit in multiple cases. I usually use a screw type connection so there is really not serious problem with this residual cement. I always use anesthesia because the soft tissue formed with the healing abutment is different from the form of final prosthesis. For extra oral cementation, unlike everyone else, I use ceramic much more than a full zirconia. So if you use ceramic, a digital approach is not really easy to use. So I use analog approach using plaster model. I use PFM and PFZ models quite a lot. But in the future, I believe zirconia prosthesis, very beautiful aesthetic outcome is demonstrated by dentists and I will learn from them and I will cooperate with labs and I will transform myself toward a digital. If you want more details, please come to the offline master course. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you very much.